Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be sharing with you a review on the wear and tear and how I've been finding my small Chanel boy bag. Uh, you guys may know that I decided to purchase this in August last year, so in 2017. I've had the bag for 16 months now, so I've had a really long time to actually see how it wears, see whether or not I thought it was worth the money, and I'm also kind of going to show you what fits inside. I actually took a look at the website before, because first thing I wanted to talk about is price. And the price of the bag has gone up astronomically since I purchased it. And as I said, I have the small size. I'm going to say you cannot fit a lot in here. And these currently retail for 6430 Australian dollars. That is a lot of money to spend on one handbag. And obviously one of the things that you're paying for is the heritage of the brand. I know when you buy a luxury product like this, you kind of also have that guarantee that if anything happens to it, that you can take it back to the store and they will repair it for you free of charge. But six and a half thousand dollars is a holiday. You could do so much more with that money. And I know that's probably at least $1,000 more than I actually paid for the bag, which in itself, that was a lot of money. Now, the big question for me is, would I spend six and a half thousand dollars on a Chanel bag today? And the answer is, Probably not. I think I would try and look for this bag on the pre-love market because I know I've seen so many Chanel boy bags for a fraction of that price, especially when I've been browsing on the real real. Maybe I'll link some of the options down in the description box below, but some of the other places that you can look at Vestia Collective, Yogi's Closet, Fashion File, those sorts of places. I do recommend getting your items authenticated before purchasing them if you can, especially when buying pre-love. And uh, I would say, hey June, uh, if you haven't checked out her channel for luxury bags, she knows quite a few good authenticators. So I would recommend checking out her channel for where to go for that. The one thing about Chanel bags is that they truly are an investment if you were buying a classic design, which the boy bag has become one of the classic Chanel bags. So I am glad that I made this purchase in that sense, especially considering that the value of the bag, considering that mine is in excellent condition, has actually risen over the time that I've had this in my wardrobe. Next, I want to talk about the details of the actual bag itself, and then I'm going to go through wear and tear. As I mentioned before, I got the Chanel boy bag in the small size, and this is the chevron design, which I like because it's a little bit different to the classic quilting, and it has the ruthenium hardware, which is sort of an aged silver hardware, kind of a gunmetal gray color, which I really like. I think it makes it look a little bit edgy, a little bit uh, relaxed and casual, great for date night, that kind of thing. Oh, and in case you were curious, I bought mine from the Chanel Boutique in the Westfield Sydney store on Castle Ray Street. So let's talk through the actual design elements of the bag. So it's a very simple sort of a bag. It's quite a boxy structured style. I'm going to list the measurements on the screen here just because I don't know them off the top of my head. But it basically just has this clasp here which you open by pushing the sides and then lifting the bag up. And then you have one main compartment here. And at the back here we just have a little slot pocket which really can't fit a lot. I've got the authentication card in here but you could probably put your bank cards or something like that if you didn't want to carry a wallet. So you can kind of see this is detail from the side and then the back is just plain which I actually think it would have been nice if there was a little slot pocket on the back too just so you could put your opal card or something like that for easy reach. Then the chain is just a really thick chain with a leather strap that is adjustable although I haven't actually adjusted mine and it looks like really you can't change this now looking at it I don't think I've ever looked at that that closely until now. So what I like about the bag is the fact that you can wear it three ways. You can wear it on your shoulder just like this long, you can wear it across your body or you can double up the straps like this and have it as a shorter strap shoulder bag, which I think looks really nice and just a little bit more elegant for an evening out. Now let's talk about the wear and tear. 
Now I'd say over the last 16 months, I probably used the bag between 60 and 90 times. So not every single day, but I think enough to really form an opinion about how it has worn and how happy I am with kind of the quality of the actual materials used. So I haven't got a single scratch on this bag. I have probably babied it a little bit more than my other bags. I've said this before, but I don't really like bags that are too high maintenance. However, I have found because this is a caviar leather, it is a lot more scratch resistant. The lambskin is a really beautiful material if you're looking at investing in a Chanel bag. However, it's much more delicate. So you are going to be very careful if you want to make sure that your bag does not scratch. So from that perspective, I think the caviar leather is fantastic and definitely a very good choice if you are buying your very first Chanel bag. I've really made a point of not overstuffing the bag because the actual structure of it, and I don't know if you're going to be able to see this that well or do a close up, but you can kind of see there's this little dimple here with the fabric, um, with the material, but you can kind of see there's this little dimple here where the leather dips in slightly on the sides. And if you overstuff it, then that's kind of going to pop out. And I think kind of, I alter the integrity of the bag itself. One thing I have noticed when it is empty is that the bag does dip in a little bit on the back. I've got it full right now, so you're not going to be able to see this, but when I empty it, I will show you what I mean. So that is something that I'm not really sure why it has happened because I haven't, like I said, I have not overstuffed this bag at all. So I'm wondering if that's because I haven't actually kept it stuffed while it is not in use. In terms of the strap, the strap is perfect, again not a single scratch and I haven't really noticed any scratching to the hardware either, it all looks immaculate, basically like new. The one thing I will say that I've noticed about the bag is that on the inside here, like I can kind of see that the leather sort of pulls away here and I think that's just sort of normal with leather bags but I thought I would just mention that you can see actually from the bag when you do open the bag the leather dimples all the way down the sides here so it's not really a bag I'd want to leave open like this for a very long time. I also haven't got any markings on the fabric interior either it's all perfect like I said it really does look like new there's no wear on the corners I don't think that I have actually put this down on the floor anywhere I usually just held this on my lap if I've gone out somewhere like I said it's quite small so you wouldn't really notice it on your lap especially if you're eating or anything like that the one thing I will say is that the strap can be very heavy and <laughs> right now Holding it while it is full, it does feel like a very heavy bag. Uh, I was wearing this with an off-the-shoulder dress, which meant that my, uh, I guess my skin was a lot more exposed to the weight of the chain, and I did end up having the actual chain part cutting across my skin, and it dug in a bit because the bag itself is, is quite weighty because they've used a very, very thick leather. So with all that being said, I really do think that the bag has held up absolutely beautifully. I'm so pleased with the fact that it still does look new. You wouldn't know that I bought this 16 months ago if I didn't tell you. So from that perspective, very, very pleased. Now let's kind of talk about what can fit inside. And as I said, it is a smaller bag, so it's not going to fit a lot in there. You kind of need to narrow it down to your essentials. So I'm kind of going to show you an overview from above of how I have carefully stacked the bag so that I can maximize what I can fit inside without stretching it out. So the first thing that I've tucked into the bag is my iPhone 8 Plus, and this actually fits perfectly lengthwise. I think if the iPhone was any bigger, I would not be able to fit my phone inside. The interior of this is a fabric. It's not a uh, lambskin lined, so I don't have to worry about my keys actually scratching or damaging the interior. However, I do like to use a key case just in case. Then I've got a little card holder. I've just got my essentials in here. You could probably throw some cash as well. I have a little tin of lip balm. I like the fact that this is pretty compact and it fits really neatly in here. Then I have got a miniature fragrance. So this is one of those little mini Jo Malone's that you get at Christmas time, which is only nine mils and it fits in here very, very neatly. I've got a couple of lipsticks and then I've also got a compact in case I would like to touch up on the go, which isn't really something I would normally carry around. I think if I were to forego the lipsticks, the fragrance and also the compact, I could fit my sunglasses in the front here very neatly. So as you can see, not a lot goes inside there. However, if you're the kind of person who likes to streamline and simplify what they carry on a day-to-day -day basis, then I think the size will be perfect for you. Personally, for me, I really wish that the bag was a smidge bigger. 
I don't really like the medium size. I think it's just a little bit too big because it is such a boxy and structured bag. I think it just looks a little bit too big against my frame. For reference, I'm 172 centimeters tall or about five foot eight. So I'm not short by any means. And I think if you're a petite girl, I know the large in particular, I've tried that. One of my girlfriends has it and it is enormous. Um, I think that would, that would definitely overwhelm you, but I think the medium could also be a little bit too big. So I'd highly recommend trying those on in store if you can. So I guess the real question here is, was it worth it? I'm really glad that I decided to invest in the boy bag as my first Chanel bag. I actually had the choice between this and a mini square classic flap, as, which was a lot less expensive, but I decided to go with this one because I thought that it really gelled with my personal style a lot more. And I think if I had picked the classic flap, I probably would not have worn it as much as this one. Uh, I really love the design. I think the chevron is a little bit different. It kind of makes it feel a little bit more special than the classic Chanel quilting. Uh, in terms of the price, definitely would not pay for retail price for what it currently costs. I think what I paid is probably the absolute limit of what I would pay for a Chanel bag of this size. I would love to get a classic flap, however, I'm probably going to look to the pre-loved market to actually invest in one of those. But I do just think that they are one of those quintessential classic designer bags, especially if you want to kind of build up a collection of bags that is going to last you for a very, very long time. Personally, I really like the reissue as well. I think it's a little bit more understated and I kind of like that weathered effect to the leather. So that is my full review of the Chanel small boy bag. I hope that you guys enjoyed watching this video. I'd love to know your thoughts. As I mentioned, I do think that is an astronomical price to be paying for a bag and highly recommend buying pre-loved where you can. I think if you're going to buy a bag like this, then you should save up for it. Don't buy it on credit and don't buy it if you can't afford to. Uh, Chanel bags are beautiful, but a large part of what you're paying for is the brand name. I still remember like six seven years ago, a bag like this would only cost you $3,000. It's now doubled in price, which I think is just insane. <laughs> so there you have it. That is it from me today. Hope you enjoyed this one and I will see you guys in two days time with a new video. See you soon and thank you so much for watching. Bye.